Hello, Divinians. It's me, teacher Celine Carmela Guno, your adventure partner. Let us learn and have fun. Let's go and discover the Earth as a planet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, our Father, we praise and thank you for this day. We come to you this hour asking for a blessing and help as we are gathered together virtually. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. Help us to work together and encourage each other to excellence. We ask that we would challenge each other to reach higher and farther to be the best we can be. We ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our lesson is for you to master the nature of earth science intended for grade 11 senior high school. Today, we will be exploring the planet Earth, its subsystem, minerals, and rocks. Here are our objectives. As we go navigate the lesson, you are expected to Describe the characteristics of Earth that are necessary to support life. Explain that the Earth consists of four subsystems across whose boundaries matter and energy flow. Identify common rock forming minerals using their physical and chemical properties. Classify rocks into igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Identify the minerals important to society and describe how ore minerals are found, mined, and processed for human use. We know that the Earth is moving our Sun in a very nearly circular orbit or elliptical orbit. It covers this wrong speed of nearly 30 kilometers per second or 67 miles per hour. Earth is the only planet which is third in its distance from the Sun. It is the only planet we know that inhabited with living organism. Our astronomers are working on the exploration of other planets that we may consider as habitable. Just a part of the universe in the solar system, from the previous concept learned, we already know the identified planet in the solar system. There are eight planets. The planets in order from the Sun based on their distance are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. We compare the planets closest to the Sun, which is known as the inner planet. Earth is bigger compared to Mercury, Venus, and Mars. And let us zoom in into the Earth's interior. We have the solid inner core, liquid outer core, silicate mantle, and rocky crust. Our planet has multi-nickel iron core, which gives rise extensive magnetic field, which along with atmosphere, shield from the harmful radiation coming from the sun. What makes Earth special? What do you think are the characteristics of planet Earth that make it different from all other planets? A planetary habitability or the ability to form life results 
from the complex network interaction between the planet itself. The standard definition for habitable planet is the ability to sustain life for a long period of time. Did you get it? Don't worry, let me tell you more about it. Here are the factors that make a planet habitable. Number one, temperature. Temperature influences how quickly the atoms and molecules move. If our planet experiences low temperature, it will make a chemical to react slowly, which interferes with the reaction necessary for life. Also, low temperature freezes water, making liquid water inavailable. Now, if the temperature is too much, at about 125 degrees Celsius, protein and carbohydrates molecules and genetic materials like DNA and RNA will break apart. Also, high temperature quickly evaporates water. Life seems limited in temperature range of negative 115 degrees Celsius. In this range, life lives exist as liquid. Number two is the Earth's atmosphere. Our atmospheres serve as the Earth blanket that shields the surface and the harmful radiation and provides chemical needed for life, such as nitrogen and carbon dioxide. The planet is too small. It has insufficient gravity to hold an atmosphere. The results, gas molecules escape from space, leaving the planet without an atmosphere that covers and will serve as the protective shield. If we look at the atmosphere of Venus, it is 100% thicker than the Earth. Venus' atmosphere is made up of almost entirely of greenhouse gases, making the surface too hot for life. The four giant planets are completely made up of gas. These planets are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. They are made up of helium and hydrogen. You cannot stand in the surface of the planet because it is not solid. Number three is the energy present to a planet. Energy is capacity to do work as we knew it. Comes into different forms. Without energy, the organism have no light to use, or there will be no chemical energy to run their life process. When there is too little sunlight or too few chemical energy to sell, organism will die. Life energy can be a problem. It makes the planet too hot, or if too many harmful rays, such as ultraviolet rays from the sun, it can damage the genetic materials of your skin. The last factor for number four are the nutrients. Different nutrients are used to build and maintain the body of an organism. For us humans, nutrients are from the food that we eat. They are categorized as protein, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals. They all perform the vital function for us to live without chemicals, for us to make proteins and carbohydrates, organism cannot grow. Planet without systems to deliver nutrients to its organism, like the water cycle or the volcanic activity, they cannot support life. Now that you have able to differentiate the factors that make the planet habitable, can you narrate those factors again? Okay, number one, temperature. Number two, atmosphere. Number three, energy. Number four, nutrients. That's great. We are now familiar with the different factors. Let us go farther and explore more about the whole planet. Next is the Earth's subsystem. Our planet is one large system, and it's the part acts as a subsystem.
They work together and make the earth habitable place. And we call this part as a sphere. It has the four subsystem. These are the hydrosphere, atmosphere, geosphere, and the biosphere. We have the hydrosphere. These are the examples of the hydrosphere. We have the oceans, rivers, and waterfalls. Hydro means water. Hydrosphere is the total amount of water on a planet. Next is the geosphere or the lithosphere. Geo comes from the Greek word meaning ground. It is the solid part of the earth. It is composed of most of the entire planet from its core to its crest. It is very important that when we talk about geosphere, it only includes the solid part of the earth or the non-living things. As part of the geosphere, we have here the lithosphere or the layers of the earth. First, we have the inner core followed by the outer core. Next is the mantle and last is the crest. Next is the atmosphere. Atmos comes from the Greek word meaning air. It is the layers of gases surrounding a planet. It protects life on Earth by shielding it from incoming ultraviolet radiation, keeping the planet warm through insulation, and preventing extremes between day and night temperature. Yes, we cannot see the air, but it covers the entire planet like a huge blanket. Our Earth is composed of 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen, and 1% other gases. And the last sphere is the biosphere. Bio means life. All the life forms exist on Earth are part of this. We have the human, types of three different kinds of fish, birds, animals, fungi, and other living organisms that exist on Earth. These are the examples of the biosphere. This is an example of how the subsystem interact with each other. The example of the hydrosphere is the ocean. Biosphere is the tree. Geosphere is the land and atmosphere is the water vapor. First, the water from the ocean will evaporate and it will form a clouds. And the process of condensation, it will become a rain and the process of precipitation. And if the water drops into the land, the water will be absorbed by the trees. So this is how the subsystem interacts with its other, or this can be common, commonly known as the water cycle. Planet Earth is considered habitable because of the following reasons. It has the right distance from the sun. It is protected from harmful solar radiation by its magnetic field. It is kept warm by an ice-insulating atmosphere. It has the right chemical ingredients for life, including water and carbon. The next topic is about the rock cycle and the minerals. We are familiar with the types of rocks, and these are the igneous rock, sedimentary rock, and the metamorphic rock. Igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are those types of rocks where are formed when magma or lava comes down. This is an example of an igneous rock. Sedimentary rocks. 
Sedimentary rocks are formed by sediments that is deposited over time, usually as layers at the bottom of the lakes and the oceans. When the igneous rock broken down into very small pieces with weathering of rock by wind, air, water, ice, and gravity and transported across the planet, This rock will gather and settle together. The bottom layers of this rock are compressed by gravity and cemented together. Examples of sedimentary rocks Limestone Sandstone Mudstone and the coal. When we speak of, did you know that? Semerara Mining and Power Corporation, or the SMPC, is one of the richest producer of the coal in the Southeast Asia. Metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks were once igneous and sedimentary rocks, but have been changed as a result of intense heat and or pressure within the Earth's crust. They are crystalline and often had squash or texture. Metamorphic rocks can be formed from other metamorphic rocks and they can form from sedimentary and igneous rocks too. This is an example of metamorphic rock, the knees. Basalt will undergo a melting. This will become a metabasalt. Granite will become a knees if it will undergo the process of heat and pressure. Sedimentary rocks can transform into metamorphic rocks as well. Sandstone will become quartzite. It will undergo heat and pressure. Sail will become slate. Limestone will become a marble. And marble is an example of the metamorphic rock. And the limestone is an example of the sedimentary rocks. This is the rock cycle in Earth's crust. The magma will form if the lava cools down. The magma will undergo the process of solidification and it will become an igneous rocks. If igneous rocks undergo weathering and erosion, it will become a sediments. And if the sediments undergo deposition and burial, and of course, compaction and cementation, the sediments will become sedimentary rocks. If sedimentary rocks undergo heat and pressure, it will become a metamorphic rocks. If metamorphic rocks undergo melting, it will become a magma. Igneous rocks can be a magma if it undergoes the process of melting. Igneous rocks can be a metamorphic rocks too if it undergoes heat and pressure. Sedimentary rock can be a sediment if it undergoes weathering and erosion. And of course, sedimentary rocks can be a magma if it undergoes melting. Of course, metamorphic rock can be a sediment if it undergoes weathering and erosion. Now let us have a short activity here. We are going to name the types of rocks and identify. Let us have a short activity here. You are going to name the rocks and you are going to identify the types of rock. Let us have the first rock here. What do you think is the name of this rock? Can you guess? Yes, it is. This is a correct. This is a limestone. And the limestone is 
the sedimentary rocks, correct? Next, what do you think is the name of this rock? Okay, this is a basalt. Good. And basalt is what kind or what type of rocks? Correct. This is an igneous rocks. Next, I know you are familiar with this. Okay, this is a... Correct. This is a code. And first, we have this one. What is the name of this rock? Okay, correct. This is a metabasalt. And metabasalt comes from the basalt and it undergoes a process of heat and pressure. So that is a metabasalt. And the last, what do you think is the name of this rock? This is a... Okay, this is a... Slate. And a slate is what type of rock? Correct. This is a metamorphic rock. Okay, very good. Now let's go to the last topic, which is the process of mining ore. Ore is natural rock or sediment that contains one or more value or valuable minerals, typically containing metals and can be mined treated and sold as a profit. Samples of ore. We have the ore of gold or the gold ore. We have the iron ore. We have the coal ore. We have the copper ore and many more. These are the process of mining ores. Number one is prospecting and exploration. Looking for the ore body, a deposit that can yield a large amount of required ore minerals. Number two, we have drilling. A small part of the ore is extracted to determine the resulting one, ore's quality and the amount of ore. Number three, modeling. Determining the ore size, shape, and the grade distribution throughout the deposit to apply appropriate mining method, blast and dig pattern designs, safety precautions, and efficiency and the processing method. Four, identifying and assessing the potential impact. Consideration on the social and environmental aspect and finding ways of mitigating any consequence of mining operation with the purpose of bringing the area back as close to its original states as possible. Number five is designing and constructing the mine. Engineers and scientists work hard in hand to create an appropriate mine and operational design and the process with the construction ones, all the necessary permits and acquired from the government and local communities. Number six is, six is ore extraction. High-grade ores are separated from the rest of the deposit. Number seven is the milling. The ore is crossed and concentrated. Waste materials are released. The last is the mine site decommissioning. Closer of the depleted mine, the mine site is cleaned up and reclaimed or rehabilitated for the other purposes. So these are the process of mining ores. Rocks are as important now as they have been. Rocks are used in making cement, for roofing materials, and building infrastructures, bridges, and roads. In school, they are used in writing on chalk, making the statue, ornaments, and decorations. Diamonds and sapphire and others are used as jewelries. Some rocks as tourist attraction site and for recreation. These are the only uh, uses of rocks. 
So those are the importance of minerals to society. Thank you so much for listening. You are all a scientist. Thank you for spending your time with me. Adios!